Hi, it's Pyam here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Um, I thought we'll do a new section, which is almost a market update of what's been going on. I think we'll probably do it on a monthly basis, um, just to talk about what's happened and also some of the issues that I'm seeing with mortgages and, and it getting mortgage, basically. Now, that's whether you're a first-time buyer, you're an investor, whether you're looking at auction finance, whether you're looking to do uh, various buy-to-lets, HMOs, um, all of those sort of uh, topics. And what I will do, uh, because it, I, I do recognize that the first-time buyer may not be interested in auction finance or buy-to-let investors may not be interested in buying your council home. So what I will do is I will put timestamps in my uh, description so you can actually go to the specific topics that you're interested in uh, and hopefully that will help not bore you too much I know mortgages are not the most interesting of topics but most people need them so most people need to know about them and I've set up this channel really to um, try to educate as much as I can about the pitfalls of some of the some of the issues around mortgages or some of the things that we can do as, as mortgage brokers. If you do like these videos, please do like and subscribe and put a comment. Let me know if this is a good idea. Let me know if there's something that you'd like me to discuss and talk about in terms of my next topics. Um, so please do stay tuned and enjoy this video. Hi, it's Pyam here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Um, where have I been? It's been a while since I did a video, so I thought I'll get cracking. Um, I've been losing some money. I've lost some money on stocks. <laughs> I lost a little bit of money on stocks yesterday, and there was a bit of a tech bubble, um, a short tech bubble. Hopefully, um, it will pick up. But uh, apart from that, I've been processing mortgages. And let me tell you, it's an absolute nightmare right now. Um, I was uh, so let's go let's go through I suppose the the different types of clients I've been dealing with and, and what's been happening so a lot of first-time buyers um, a lot of people looking to get onto the property ladder at high loan to value deals unfortunately um, although uh, I'm at the moment I'm advising my clients not to go for 90% loan to value deals and mainly do 85% if they can We've still got a few clients out there that are going or have to because they don't physically have the deposits and they need to buy now. So they're going for 90% deals and it's been an absolute mayhem over there. 90% it's been, so if you've got someone who's got 10% deposit right now looking to buy a mortgage, uh, buy a property, um, your choices are very, very limited. I mean, I did a video not long ago, um, I think it was about two months ago, saying, look, this market's gonna be under pressure the 90% loan to value market, stay away from it, try to save up the deposit. Um, and at the moment, we've had some major lenders pull out of the market. So we're talking about, you know, your Halifaxes, your Nationwide, your Santander's. Uh, sorry, Nationwide are still in there, but they've got quite restrictive criteria. Um, so they, they, for example, they don't lend on flats. I mean, that's quite a big thing to, to, to not lend on. Um, there is another lender platform who's part of the co-op group. I've literally just been on the phone to them for one hour, exactly, I think it was about one hour, three minutes, just to find out whether they lent on flats or not, because that's that's an important uh, important point if one of the other big lenders don't do it. So there's a few lenders out there at 90%, but pricing's not great, and the lender, I mean, Put it this way, if they're going to take an hour to pick up the phone, God help us when, when, when they're trying to get application documentation in and underwriters to look at things. And, and uh, one of the major lenders, HSBC, who, funny enough, we don't actually deal with. Um, one of the only lenders I think we, we tend not to deal with uh, because they've got quite a restrictive um, panel appointment criteria. Um, but um, they uh, have just withdrawn their 90% product as well. So... They're only, I think, lending up to 85%, which the market is generally lending to. But there are some lenders that have been even more cautious. So I'll give you an example. Barclays, who's a major lender for us and for everybody out there, um, they seem to be only lending at 85% on five-year fixes um, the last time I checked. So there's some weird stuff happening within the market. There's lots of changes with affordability as well. Barclays today... Um, said that they're capping everything, I think at 4.49 or 4.45, something like that, where before they used to go to five times income. So income multiples are being changed. Um, you know, not lending on flats and 
criteria, certainly on new builds, you know, a lot of these 90% uh, loan to value stuff is not going to be on new builds. A lot of lenders are, are, are staying sh clear of new builds and they've got restrictive criteria around new builds. Sure, there's still a lot of movement I help to buy. Funny enough, I helped to buy sort of inquiries of shot up. Um, so because of the deposit element of it, so help to buy seems to be doing quite well right now. Um, although I have gone on record and said, I don't actually believe help to buy as a uh, property owning vehicle is the best way forward um, um, because you know it's your uh, especially on the flats not so much on the houses but on flats help to buy flats should there be a downturn and should there be a problems with the prices of property um, generally new build flats have always been historically the the sector that's been hit and and and, and that's common sense really if you're in trouble and then there's 50 other flats or 100 other flats maybe four of you decide to sell at the same time pushes down the price which means you know what you think your property is worth may not be what's worth what it's worth when when it's going in, in, you know when mother multiple people are trying to sell um i also historically believe how to buy properties have been overpriced i think the builders have overpriced things because they know applicants can get a 20 percent government loan not not some money it is a loan it is interest free for the first five years you do have to pay it back so um yeah so a lot of problems around uh, high loan to value lending uh, on the buy to let side of things some positive news we've had a we've had new lenders come into the fold you know lender uh, lender like vida has come back into the market um you've seen some really positive improvements by lenders like foundation home loans so the, from a specialist side of things there's a lot of movement around that a lot of jigging around criteria so um you know the buy to let sector is actually surprisingly held quite well you know it's doing quite well um overall transactions are up for everything residential and buy to lets for us inquiries are certainly up as well um there's a lot of people actually that are looking to buy um, I'll tell you what is we're writing a lot of let to buys and that's where you know a lot of people now are looking at things and they're looking at because of the stamp duty stuff they're looking to change so they're looking to upgrade uh, and get a new property but what they don't want to do is let go of their flat maybe and we get a lot of them where people are in a flat they want to go into a house but they're going to keep that flat and, 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 you, and turn that into a it's called a let's to buy, but a buy to let let's to buy. So a lot of inquiries around that. Now that has its own challenges because essentially what they're trying to do at the same time is pull out some equity out of the property to put down as a deposit for the new property, which is fine. But if it's very tight, because generally what happens is, and this is this is the norm, guys. Um, people think their property is worth more than what they what it's worth. So when they come to you and say, oh, I've got a flat which is worth £350,000, um, but you know, I'm now going to take, I don't know, 75% um, of the value of that uh, property out to put down as a deposit for my new property, what happens if that down values? What happens if it's not worth 350 it's worth 300 or 325 It affects the transaction. So you've got to, I mean, I always tell my clients, but well, you've just got to keep things... Um, keep a backup plan if, if the value valuations don't go to plan and that's another point valuations are a problem right now and um, certainly on remortgages there's a lot of down valuations happening still i'm still still seeing them so um be mindful around that um if from the from the bridging finance auction stuff pretty much still as it is uh, a lot more lenders coming back to the fold there's a few more lenders lending at 75 percent loan to value gross market which is good um however um you've got to take it with a pinch of salt because it's what on what basis are they valuing things is it on 180 day resale value or they do not on open market so but there's there's certainly a lot more uh, they have got minimum loan sizes you know a lot of them have got 100 150k loan sizes so you know for the smaller stuff um, you're still restricted to a lot of lenders. You might be able to get 65, 70% loan to value if it's the loan is under 100K. So that gives you an idea on the on market, uh, what where we are with the market. A lot of right to buys. Uh, we, we've been huge in, in right to buy over the years. Um, I like right to buys. I think um, uh, they're, they're a good way of obviously people earning, uh, owning their own homes. Uh, as a broker, we've specialized in it over the years. So if you're looking to buy your council home, 
um, and and we're, and I get a lot of buy, right to buy second hand. So we did their right to buys maybe, and now they're looking to turn that into a buy to let. Um, the only thing that will happen is you've got to um, you've got to wait until your five year period is run out. You can do consent to let or permission to let with your existing residential lenders, but you will not be able to capital raise and pull out money uh, within the first five years of your uh, right to buy period. Um, what else is happening? A lot of limited company stuff. I'm doing a lot of limited company buy to let. Um, transactions as such, um, service is horrendous by some of the lenders, honestly. I had a case go to a like-for-like -like remortgage. So I've got a chap who owns, I think it's about 10 properties. Um, he did a like-for-like -like remortgage, I think it's about 120K, so it, was, it wasn't a big mortgage. Like-for-like um, -like came to me and said, Pine, my term is running out, can you just put me on a different rate? No problem. Month and a half later, I'm still answering questions by the lenders. So service, and, and every time they come back and ask me a question, uh, it, it's it's another couple of days for the service turnaround time. So um, when you are looking to get a remortgage, leave plenty of time because it's, things are just taking longer. They're just not being, lenders are just not coping very, very well with this, all this working from home and things. And let's not even talk about solicitors. That's just a, another minefield at the moment. Uh, out of the most of the complaints that we get, it actually nothing to do with the lenders and nothing to do with us. It's literally to do with the solicitors. Solicitors not getting back to people because if you think conveyancing as, as a role is to do with lots of documentation, signing documents, putting them in the post, um, they're not geared up from working from home. Hopefully that will improve as people are going back. Uh, but yeah, a lot of problem around solicitors and not necessarily issues around the, the, it's just things taking longer. So everything just takes longer, okay? What you will find from our perspective, if you come by a mortgage by us, I will be asking for a lot more documentation up front, a lot more than normal, okay? Because we've obviously got experience, a lot of paranoia around um, loans, okay? So government loans, have you taken any government loans? Did you have money? Is it a sign of a distress? Uh, a lot of businesses say, no, actually, I took out the loan because I think it's a very good deal. Interest free for the first year. I don't know what's going to be around the corner and I can invest in my business. The lenders will say, great, make sure you tell us you're not using it from a, you know, make sure they want to see that they, it's not being used as a source of deposit. Uh, they want to see that you're, you've, the business is still doing right and there's no signs of distress. Um, they want to know that... Um, essentially you've got your own source of deposit and everything else has come from your own sources so there's a lot of questions around bounce back loans government loans furlough schemes all of that stuff lots of questions coming around this so we're trying to gather all this stuff up front so you're not uh, we're not going through the drip feed of you know the chinese whispers of the lending underwriters and the business development managers and all the various things so we're trying to get all of that up front to them um so yeah a bit of bit you know but there are some interesting transactions at the moment. Um, there's a lot of activity, I have to say. Obviously, um, uh, Rightmove said that they had the biggest ever July. Um, I think since they created Rightmove, since they've created their um, statistics. Um, and that has carried on. I mean, there's a lot, lot more um, activity around. A lot of difficult cases. You know, what I would say is when we set up the business called Niche Advice, you know, we dealt with a lot of people that were um, not, you know, non-standard people. We're dealing with a lot more standard people, but have got different circumstances. So you could have, you know, you could be steady Eddie, be in a civil servant or in an employed position job. That's not the problem. But however, you might have, you might be a foreign national. Your property might be a little bit different. It might be a quirky property. Um, you may be getting a bonus uh, or, or, or commission on a monthly basis that takes you out of the, the norms, um, or you might be um, you might be receiving a gifted deposit from somebody that's not a family member, for example, or you might be getting a gifted deposit from somebody abroad, or is a family member but it's maybe an uncle. Um, so there's all sorts of reasons why people are approaching us now um, in terms of income multiples, trying to get the maximum. Uh, obviously a buy to let side of things, we've been doing this for a long, long time, so we've got good expertise around that. But I'm getting so much um, more business out of what you call standard clients that are just, you know, they're just 
finding it difficult. And unfortunately, when you deal with uh, the big guys, and what I mean, the big brokers out there, and you see them out there, they don't charge a fee, they don't do this, they don't do that, and it's all fantastic, and it's very glitzy, nice website and everything. But, you know, they've got 300, 400, you know, young people uh, at their desk, and they don't necessarily, they may not have the experience that we've got. And essentially, that's where we, that's where we differentiate ourselves, you know. And most of the cases have been done by yours truly. So um, hopefully by going through these videos, at least I've demonstrated that I've got a little bit of knowledge within the within this sector and I, hopefully you're in good hands. Um, that's about it really guys. For Thank you very much for all the support and help and the comments and watching these videos. They really do um, help us. Um, like and subscribe if you like this video. And please share and give me a call if you need anything. Thanks a lot. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.